Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games and game development tutorials. Today I'd like to introduce grass trample effects to my mesh grass shader graph in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. Natural looking grass should move and shake when characters walk through it, no? This effect will use a renderer feature to upload information to shaders, so you might want to watch my series introducing them. I'm also extending the graph written in the previous mesh grass video, so be sure to work through that tutorial. I'll link to both videos in this video's description, as well as the top right corner. Before we get started, I wanted to take a second to thank you all for watching my videos and being a wonderful community in general. I've had a great time so far with this channel, and I plan to continue with weekly game development tutorials. Please consider subscribing and turning on bell notifications. Thanks again. And on to the tutorial. I made this project in Unity 2020.2.1f1 and Universal Render Pipeline 10.2.2. This project will work in Unity 2020.1 as well. Your graph will just look a little different. However, if you're using a newer version, be sure to check the video description and comments for any updates and fixes I might have posted. Grass trampling is a complicated subject. There are many ways to implement it. In this video, I'll focus on a more lightweight and general approach which tracks a few trampling objects' positions and sends them to shaders. The shaders look at that data and adjust vertex positions accordingly. It's a lot like how Unity URP handles lights. To upload data to shaders, I'll use a renderer feature. This feature will maintain a list of trampling objects and, each frame before rendering, store each object's position into an array. Then, it will enqueue a command to upload that array to the GPU, with a custom render pass. I like this method since it doesn't require a singleton game object, and we can control exactly when Unity sets the data in the GPU. Alright, create a new render feature and call it Grass Trample Feature. Open it. We name the custom render pass class to pass, and clear out all generated functions except for execute. In the feature class, add a serialized integer field called max tracked transforms. This is the maximum number of grass trampling objects. Rename the pass variable, add a list of transform type and an array of vector4 type. The list stores tracked game objects, while the array contains their positions, ready to be sent to the GPU. Add two functions to add and remove tracked objects. Now, Unity calls this create method when it sets up the renderer. Initialize the tracked list within, create the position array, and initialize the pass instance. We'd like this pass to run before any rendering so all shaders can make use of the tracked positions, so set the pass's render event to before rendering. In the add render passes function, update the trample positions array to hold the most up to date values. First, clear the array to hold only zeros. Next, get the position from each transform in the list, and store it in the array. There are a couple of wrinkles to take note of. First, since the trample positions array and the tracking transforms list probably aren't the same size, it's important to take the minimum of their lengths and use that in the for loop. Second, trample positions is a vector4 array, since GPUs just like working with vector4s. That's no big deal, just set the fourth component to 1. Finally, and queue the pass. Okay, in the pass class, add a trample positions vector4 array and a number of trample positions integer instance variable. In the constructor, add a vector4 array argument and store the pass value in the instance variable. Then encapsulate the num trample positions instance variable into a mutable property. Scroll back to the features create method and pass the trample positions array to the pass constructor. Then, in add render passes, set the pass's number of trample positions to the loop count variable. In the passes execute function, we'll finally upload this data to the shader. Get a command buffer and set a global vector array and a global integer. Those values will be accessible in shaders under the given variable names, underscore grass trample positions and underscore num grass trample positions. Double check for typos here. Don't forget to execute and release the command buffer, and then we're done. Return to Unity, select the renderer settings object, and add a grass trample feature. 
Nothing happens, obviously, but it's ready to go. Let's make a script component to register a game object as a trampling object. Create a C Sharp script called Grass Trample Object, then open it. We don't need a start or update method, so delete those. Create a serialized field to hold the renderer settings asset, then write this try get feature method. It will find and return the first grass trample feature on the renderer, if one exists. Now create an on enable and on disable method pair, which add and remove a game object's transform from the features tracking list. Okay, we have to do one more thing. If you tested this setup as it is, Unity would not track all trample objects correctly. Unfortunately, the order that the scene loads and that the renderer loads is not strictly defined. So it's possible for Unity to load the renderer feature after the trample objects on enable function has fired. To make sure the feature does not miss any trampled objects, add this line in its create method. It queries open scenes for any enabled objects with the trample object component and adds them to the list. A similar problem appears when switching scenes, but only in the editor. In the add renderer passes function, add this line which removes null entries from the list. Wrap it in a hash if block so it'll only run in the editor and not in your builds. So that's the meat of the trample effect. Go ahead and create a couple of trampling objects. Don't forget to add the trample script to them. Now let's open the grass shader graph. We want to add the trample offset. This is calculated in this part of the graph which, at the moment, calculates wind. The trample offset must be inserted before we multiply by the UVV coordinate. So let's rearrange some of these nodes. Swap the UV multiplication nodes and the XZ vector nodes. So the chain looks like this. Calculate wind texture UV, sample the wind texture and remap. Multiply by wind strength, change to a vector 3 in the XZ plane, multiply by the UVV coordinate, add the world position, and transform to object space. Now create a custom function node and add two outputs, a vector 3 called offset and a float called wind multiplier. Ignore the errors for now, we'll fix them. When the grass is being trampled, it should dampen the wind effect, so multiply the wind vector by the wind multiplier. Then add the trample offset onto the chain after that. Hook the final value into the multiply node with a UVV coordinate, so the trample effect will not affect the grass base. Okay, let's create the custom function script. Don't worry, it's not complicated. In Unity, navigate to your shader and create an HLSL file called trample.hlsl. You'll need to do this in your operating system. Open the file. First, add a couple of lines to ensure this file won't be compiled twice. Then, add the variables received from the renderer feature. The names must match exactly with the name set in the command buffer. Note that the length of the array should match the max setting in your renderer feature. If not, you could get errors when your shader tries to read out of bound values. Next, create a function called calculate trample. This float suffix tells the shader graph what precision of numbers we'll be using. Next are several arguments, five inputs for world position, max distance, fall off, push away strength, and push down strength, and two outputs for offset and wind multiplier. Right away, set default values for these outputs. In the shader graph preview window, the trample positions might not be set, so wrap the next code in a hash if not defined block so that it will not run when in the shader graph preview. Now loop through each trample position. Calculate the distance from this vertex to the trample position. We'll convert that to a trample strength, divide the distance by the maximum distance, and saturate the quotient to create a value ranging from 0 to 1. Then take that to the power of falloff. This adjusts the shape of the trample curve as you move away from the trample position. The strength should be highest when the distance is lowest, so subtract the entire calculation from 1. Our trample offset is composed of two separate offsets, push away and push down. To calculate the push away component, we need to isolate the xz component of the distance vector and then normalize that. 
Multiply this vector by the push away strength and then the overall strength. The push down is very similar, except it always points downwards. Finally, add the push away and push down offsets to the total offset variable. Then, to calculate the wind multiplier, take the minimum of the current multiplier and 1 minus the trample strength. This ensures the wind is suppressed by the strongest trample affecting this position. Back in the graph, select your custom function node and set the file to trample.hlsl and the function to calculate trample. Then add five inputs, one for each input argument in the calculate trample function. Next, we need to fill those input fields. World position is just a position node set to world space. The rest need adjustable properties. So add four float properties for trample max range, trample fall off, trample push strength, and trample squish strength. Round them into the appropriate inputs, and then save the asset. Select your grass material and adjust the trample settings there. Press play and test it out. I don't know why, but it's so satisfying to walk through a thick field of grass with these effects on. Depending on how your mesh is triangulated, it might look a little strange being bent around. I would manually triangulate your mesh in your 3D modeling program of choice. Just make sure that the far corners aren't free to flap around. While you're there, you could add more vertices to your mesh so the grass is a little more pliable. Although each vertice you add will make the algorithm less efficient. That brings me to some short performance considerations. Keep in mind, this system is easy to set up, but it doesn't scale well. Each additional trample object you add increases your shader's workload exponentially. To lessen this effect, try to have as few vertices in your grass mesh as possible. If you want many trampling objects, don't fret. My journey with grass renderers is not close to complete. In future videos, I plan to optimize my procedural grass renderers, integrate grass with Unity Terrain, and look at another approach to grass trampling. One where I render a trample texture, much like how Unity creates shadow maps. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss the videos. Thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like this video. It lets YouTube know to recommend it to others and it really helps out the channel. And please leave a comment if you have any questions. Are there any other features you need in a grass renderer? Do you have a suggestion for another video topic? Thanks again for watching, and make games.